Praise the Lord. That looks like one quarter of the church. I said, Praise the Lord. Happy New Year. That happy is not happy. I pray that this year will be happy for everyone in Jesus' name. You know, sometimes when you come to a new year like this, and this one meets this and he says, Happy New Year. The other one says, Happy New Year to you too. And then you meet this one, Happy New Year. Everybody, Happy New Year, Happy New Year. But then I notice that, you know, the new year is like the old year. And I'm asking myself, why is it that Happy New Year is a horrible new year? I discovered something. And because of what I discovered, I made up my mind that I will make this new year a happy new year for myself. And I discovered a formula that ability which we have with activity what we do will amount to productivity ability you have that already plus activity will have tell me productivity and I discovered there were people that come to the new year with old ability and then they proceed in the new year with old activity and i'm not surprised that even though they say happy new year happy new year happy new year old activity plus old ability equals tell me old productivity and by the year gen by the time january runs out and you have february march april we're back to the old year and then we're just kind of drudging on. But as I look at the new year, and for me, and I want you to put me on record. I want you to check up on me. That is, check up on my activities. Check up on my ability. You're going to discover that I put a new ability to what I do a new activity to what I do. And guess what I'm going to have? New productivity. And they say, like father, like son, like father, like daughters. I pass that to you. When you find yourself in the new year, that is the same old activity. Say, no, it cannot be. The same must change this year. Because there must be new productivity this year. Yeah. And I, you know, Paul, the apostle said, follow me as, I can't hear you now, as I follow Christ. And what can I tell you? Will I tell you, follow somebody I don't know? Follow a pastor of another church? What do you think I should say? Follow me as I follow Christ. And so I'm going to let out a secret unto you. Because this year, I am going to go higher. I say I am going to go higher. I'm going to have a new altitude. And I, and I want you to hold me to my words. You can check up on me in the middle of the year, at the end of June. Check up on me if Jesus tarries in December. And find out whether I have a new altitude. That's the goal I'm getting there. But you know, I discovered that activity 
plus attitude equals altitude. The activity, the things you do, the total, the sum, the aggregate. I do this, I do this, I do this, I put everything together. All those activities plus my attitude, my attitude to you, my attitude to the church, my attitude to my problems, my attitude to my neighbors, my attitude to the people I meet, whatever my ability may be, whatever my activities are, if I have a lousy attitude, a wrong attitude, a negative attitude, a kind of depressing attitude, my activity will not come up, will not produce, but new activity plus a new attitude will equal a new altitude. And so when you say happy new year, happy new year, you must understand you are the one to make this year new for me, for me, it will be new. But I see that when I just say attitude and I say altitude, attitude on this side, and I'm moving on, and I get to an altitude. How many people are climb, climbing up this year? You're climbing up in Jesus' name. I discover for myself that. There are some things in between attitude on that side in the, we call it continuum, in the continuum, in the line, in the path, in the road that leads to that altitude. I discover there are things in between. And you know, if I just preach to you, I can just quote Bible to you, and then I say, praise the Lord, hallelujah, amen, and get you excited and go back home. But then you need to have a handle on what you're hearing so that this year will be the best year of your life. Yeah. Number one, I, I'm not preaching on the message today yet. I'm just telling you on my own kind of new year outlook. I said new year outlook. And because of that new year outlook, that's why I can confidently tell you that you shall watch me this year and hold me to my word. And if I go less, you will know, since I put myself on record publicly, and I'm challenging you, that you too, you put yourself on record, how? Publicly. Let your wife hold you to your word. And let your husband hold you to your word. Let your neighbors, your brothers, your sisters hold you to your word. That this year you are going to climb higher. And let them check up on you. Whether you are climbing higher or you are going like the old past. I will not go the old past. I discovered something that if I am going to move from that attitude and aptitude and I'm going to go to this altitude number one I need to check up on my aptitude what do I have ability to do what do I have strength to do and then clean it up bring it up make it higher do something that your aptitude this year, nothing will touch that aptitude. You will do something great in Jesus' name. And then I discovered that I need to also check up on the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes, blessed are these, blessed are these, blessed are these. And I need to go to those Beatitudes. And as I go to those beatitudes, first of all, I have the aptitude. Now I check up on the beatitudes. Anything I'm going to do, anywhere I'm going to go, any action I'm going to take, I'm going to do it with the understanding of the beatitudes. Number three, fortitude. That means courage. 
this year no lion will stand in my way this year everything that stands in my way i'm not going to you know back up and go into my room and then say oh god i wanted the year to be new but look at me there is a lion in the way there's a lion of the tribe of judah inside me here and when i move on this year and i go on in the stories of that lion of the tribe of judah that lion there is fake it's counterfeit it's running like it's not really like a running lion i clear out of the way in jesus name fortitude you, you cannot do much without courage without a heart that says i am getting there i will get there and you know we have to have gratitude in life you cannot do everything by yourself alone and so you must have you must learn to say thank you and then thank you thank you everyone that gives you a cup of cold water thank you everyone that shows you the way my friend i want to go this way do you know the way there yes take this way turn right turn left thank you anyone that serves you even if they don't serve you to your expectation thank you if you go through the year with gratitude gratitude always saying thank you you will get there magnitude you see there are people that are used to giving the smallest service they can give the lowest level of service they can do they forget the words of jesus an extra mile you've done that go the extra mile you've said that go the extra mile you've offered that go the extra mile success achievement belongs to the people that every time they look at the magnitude of what they do and they go the extra mile those are the people this new year you'll have a new altitude a new attitude number one a new aptitude number two a new beatitudes number three a new fortitude number four you know i'll be surprised if anything and anyone can make a deeper life member afraid when god has said fear not fear not fear not i am with you i'll make you a new threshing instrument you will thrash and thresh all the mountains in jesus name and the wind will blow all the chaff away from your sight in jesus name no fear on your faces as i look at you and i believe no fear in your heart as i look at you a new fortitude a new gratitude learn to say thank you this year a new magnitude go the extra mile and do something bigger greater higher for everyone around you this year and then the lord has promised you a new altitude somebody say amen once again happy prosperous achieving great new year for every one of you in jesus name close your eyes and pray and tell the lord this year you'll be a new man god needs a few good men a few good men new 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 activities new ability new prosperity new possibilities new productivity a new aptitude a new beatitude 
a new fortitude, a new gratitude, a new magnitude, a new attitude resulting in a new altitude. In Jesus' name we pray. A new year. Amen. Father, we thank you for this new year. We thank you because you have called us to climb to a new altitude. And you have given us the promise that you will be with us. I pray for every brother and every sister, every boy and every girl, everyone, O oh Lord, that this year will be truly a new happy year for everyone in Jesus' name. Everything we ought to do, everything you plan for us to do, everything you have ordained for us to do, everything that you have earmarked, this is the way Walk ye in it this year with a new strength, with a new focus, with a new courage, with a new ability, and with a new strength. We're going to do it in Jesus' name. Lead your people higher. Let them achieve more in every area of their lives this new year in Jesus' name. I thank you because I know it is done. We will see it. We'll have a testimony. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Another amen. A new year. Amen. We're coming to Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13 I'm reading from verse 34 Mark chapter 13 I'm reading from verse 34 for the son of man is as a man taking a fat journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and to every man his work and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch you see that line i repeated that the son of man the lord jesus christ our savior and lord is going to a far country is gone to heaven and then before he left he called all his servants and he gave them their work and it says he gives to every man his work and commanded them to watch you need to ask yourself you're a child of god you're born again you've repented of your sin you believed on the lord jesus christ and embraced him as your personal savior you have come into the kingdom and he gives you something to do and he says watch watch over that specific personal special essential assignment he has given you he gave to every man his work and he commanded watch look at verse 35 Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh at evening, or at noon, at midnight, or at cock crowing, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. But remember, he gave to every man his work. Galatians chapter 6, reading from verse 4. Galatians chapter 6, 
I'm reading from verse 4. But let every man prove his own work. Christ our Lord, Christ our Master, has given to every man his work and has commanded, watch over that assignment and work I give you. Now it says, let every man prove his own work and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another for every man you see that every man shall bear his own body every man will do his own work every man will carry his own load every man will remove his own problems every man will do what the lord had assigned him to do revelation chapter 22 in Revelation chapter 22, I read from verse 12. Revelation chapter 22, I'm reading from verse 12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man, you notice that, again, to give every man according as his work shall be. He follows it through. He gave every man his work and he expects every man to concentrate on that work that had been assigned unto him by the Lord. And then at the end of the day, he's going to reward every man according to his work. This morning, I'm talking to you on rewardable commitment to every man's work. Rewardable commitment to every man's work as we come to this new year. And then we now recollect that Christ has given to every man, every brother, every sister, every boy, every girl, something for this year, something for this life, and he wants us to accomplish everything he has given. Now, if we're committed to that work that he has given to each one of us, rewards will come. Even from this week, he'll keep on, he'll start giving us rewards. And this first month of the year, he'll start giving us rewards. And then, of course, throughout the year, as we're accomplishing, accomplishing, and then as we're evaluating that we're doing what he has called us to do, the Lord is going to reward us continually in Jesus' name. Rewardable commitment to every man's work. Three things we're looking at. Number one, every man's appointed work under the new covenant. We need to understand the covenant in which we live is different from the covenant of the Old Testament people. And the things he has called us to do is different from what he called David to do different from what he called Solomon to do and different from what he called Joshua to do. Well, if you are a student of the Bible, he told them in the Old Testament, he said, all those Amalekites and the Canaanites and this and this and that, their cup of iniquity is full, get rid of them. Amalekites, kill them, destroy them. But you know, in the new covenant, Jesus said, The Son of Man is not come to kill or to destroy, but to save lives. In the new covenant, our assignment is different. Our calling is different. The appointed work under the new covenant is different. And so, point number one, every man's appointed work under the new covenant discover it dedicate yourself to it be diligent in doing it and determine that you're not going to slide back 
to the old covenant and do their work for them. They've done their work, they're gone. We are now in the new covenant. Every man's appointed work under the new covenant. Point number two. A define a political political then you put a behind that a political wisdom was newborn consecration you see if we're going to do the work he has assigned for us to do we need wisdom but not political wisdom is a political wisdom that he is a kind of wisdom that has no political undertone that has no political coloring that has no political maneuvering it's a kind of wisdom that is a define a define a political wisdom with newborn consecration that means a kind of consecration that is new or the new year a kind of consecration that is not the old regular consecration old tired weary consecration old competitive consecration i'm comparing my consecration with theirs with hers with his i can't do that my assignment is different her assignment is different yes she has a work to do he has a work to do i have a work to do and my consecration must match the work he has given me to do a define a political wisdom with newborn consecration number three earnest appropriate watchfulness earnest appropriate watchfulness over the new found commission the new found commission you just discovered it here is what the lord has commissioned me to do here is what the new year ought to be involved with and because of that you have appropriate watchfulness over that commission over that work over that duty over that responsibility over that assignment and you're earnest earnest appropriate watchfulness over the new found commission point number one every man's appointed work under the new covenant we're coming back to mark chapter 13 mark chapter 13 i read from verse 34 for the son of man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants gave authority to his servants servants of god the servants of god should not act as if they don't have any authority they don't have any strength they don't have any power they don't have any backbone he gave authority to his servants and not only that and uh, to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch he gave uh, every man is work the question is what's every man's appointed work under the new covenant quite a lot look at the beginning of that appointed work we're looking at john chapter 6 john chapter 6 and i read from verse 28 john chapter 6 reading from verse 28 then said they unto him what shall we do that we might work the works of god what shall we do that we might work the works of god here were people the people of israel they were asking the lord jesus christ we want to work work for god work under your own new covenant that you have brought what shall we do that we might work the works 
of God. Look at verse 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he has sent. He's seen the foundation of the work he has assigned unto us is that you believe on Christ whom he has sent to save the world. You are not saved yet. You are not born again yet. A new life has not come to you. You cannot start any work. The foundation of the work he has called us to do in the new covenant is that you believe on Christ whom the Father has sent. And so I want to ask you, have you been born again? Have you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you got that new eternal life he gives us when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? Does the Spirit of God bear witness in your heart that truly you are a child of God and things are different now? Grace has come in and sin has gone out and guilt has gone out condemnation has gone out because here is the beginning of the work appointed for us to do the very first step is that you believe on the lord jesus christ work look at philippians chapter 2 philippians chapter 2 and i'm reading from verse 12 philippians chapter 2 here we're reading from verse 12 it says in verse 12 wherefore my beloved now we've done we've, we've gone the first step we're born again we're children of god we're brethren in the kingdom of christ and it says wherefore my beloved as she have always obeyed not as in my presence only not as in my presence only a saved soul is conscious of the one who has saved him and he knows the one who has saved him is there with him all the time whether paul is there or peter is there or whether james is there and john is not there he's not doing anything because of peter paul james or john is doing what he's doing because and a work has been appointed unto him and he knows that god is watching him all the time and so he says but now much more in my absence look at this walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling that's the work that's the work it's the initial thing it's the essential thing. It's the number one thing you should take care of. You see, we cannot just be running here and running there. And our salvation has leaked out. Our confidence in Christ and our possession of eternal life is not certain. It says, before we embark on any other thing, in the new, under the new covenant, it says, we must make sure that you work out your own salvation. Your own salvation. Are you born again? And are you retaining that new birth experience? Do you still have the fresh 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 witness of the holy spirit that the abiding comforter is there and the abiding savior is there and the abiding sanctifier is there work it out your own salvation with fear and trembling for it is god which walketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure first thessalonians chapter one in first thessalonians chapter one verse three remembering without ceasing your work of faith unbelievers are not here that is they are not in that verse you must have faith in christ and it is that handle of faith it is that foundation of faith and it is that reality of faith that makes you to do anything if you walk you walk by faith if you speak you speak by faith 
If you help, you help by faith. If you're preaching, you're preaching by faith. If you pray, it's the prayer of faith. If you evangelize, you do it by faith. Anything you do, because now you've laid the foundation and you have to walk for the Lord, it says, remembering without ceasing, your work of faith and labor of love labor of love that's the foundation any labor we undertake anything we do if love is not at the center if love is not at the perimeter if love is not at the pivot if love is not the support if love is not the motive it's useless under the new covenant you know that the old covenant Saul could hear about something and then becomes angry and then he goes to wipe out all those people, old covenant. Under the old covenant, a prophet might say, I went in the heat of my heart and because of the heat of my heart, I cut this now, cut that down. Old covenant, in the new covenant, anything that is done as the heat from the heat of the heart, Anything that is done from the anger in the heart is not new covenant work. It says it's a labor of love and then the patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father. The work we do is based on our faith. It is based on believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that faith, you move on. And everything you do is centered, focused, built on that faith. I'm reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We're reading now from verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 10. It says according to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder according to the grace of God it's not by grace it's not by grace it's not by you know human strength human drive human power and human authority and thrash down everybody climb on everybody push down everybody why are you pushing me down i'm going somewhere get out of my way and then you push that one down why are you pushing me down i'm going somewhere i must achieve something uh -uh. the new testament that the new covenant work that he has given us to do doesn't push anybody down because now we're acting by grace. We're living by grace. It says, according to the grace, the grace of God, which is given unto me. As a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. What kind of foundation? Drawing water, cutting stones. What kind of foundation? Getting the, you know, Gentiles to come and you know, just be active? No. It's the foundation of salvation. Salvation in his own heart. Salvation that was given to other people, giving them the knowledge of how they come to know the Lord. It says, have laid the foundation and another builders thereupon. That's the New Testament work. That's the New Covenant work. We're building thereon, building thereon. And we're telling people how they should be born again. We're telling people how they live for the glory of God. And let every man, let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For all the foundation can no man lay, and that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. You see that? Every man's work shall be made manifest. Going out and telling people how to be born again. 
going out and telling people how to come to know the Lord as their personal Savior, going out and telling the people to turn away from their sins and to turn to the only Savior. That's the work. And every man's work shall be made manifest, for that day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is acts of the apostles every man's work under the new covenant acts of the apostles chapter 13 I'm reading here from verse 2. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, reading from verse 2. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Under the new covenant, the essential work the important work, the irreplaceable work is going out and telling others about the Savior who died to save them. And as they gathered together in the church at Antioch, and as the Holy Ghost wanted to give every man his work, he said, now the time has come for Paul, and the time has come for Barnabas that they will go to the work I have called them to. If Paul or Barnabas had remained in the Antioch church, whatever they were doing in the Antioch church will not be their appointed work. If you are listening to the Lord, the Lord will let you know here is the appointed work and if you don't do that appointed work and habitually you're already acclimatized and you're used to a particular work you're doing and all your prayer all your consecration this one this one this one which I am doing even the Holy Ghost will not change this, will not take me away from this. You are going to miss your appointment. You miss your appointment because it says, separate unto me and set apart unto me and give unto me the work I have called them to. Now this is chapter 13 of Acts. When we study the Bible, we should study intelligently. James had finished his work in chapter 12 and he had died. He had gone to be with the Lord. And Paul did not say, I don't think James finished. And so I'm going to pick up in Jerusalem what James did not finish. No, Paul cannot do that. I hope you will not do that. And Barnabas cannot say, now one of them is missing. And since James is missing, here am I now, I'm going to fill in the place of James. No, Barnabas will not do that. You will not do that. Are you here an amen? You see, there are people, they don't understand that when James died, James finished what he was called to do. And since he had finished, now Paul, what are you going to do? Hear from the Lord. Hear his word. Separate unto me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work I call them to. We need to understand, I'm not going to follow Solomon. Look at what Solomon did. Old covenant, that's not my work. 
Look at what those thousands of people did as we read in First Chronicles 25, 26, 27 and say, hey, look at that. Look at my work. Uh -uh, old covenant. I come now to the new covenant. And under the new covenant, I say, Lord, here I am. I present my talent. I present my skill. I present my strength. I present my training. I present everything I've got use me the way you want to use me i'm not going to do what nehemiah did i'm not going to do what ezra did appoint for me the work you have given me to do under the new covenant look at verse 3 and when they had fasted and prayed these were people wanting to receive fresh information instruction from the lord and when they had prayed and fasted and laid hands on them they sent them away so they being sent forth by the holy ghost departed unto Seleucia, and from they sailed to cyprus and when they were at salamis they what did they do tell me what did they do they preached they preached they preached the gospel they presented the gospel. They told sinners how sinners will be saved. Chapter 14 of Acts. Acts chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 23. Acts chapter 14 verse 23. And when they had ordained them elders in every church elders in every church and had prayed were fasting they commended them to the lord on whom they believed believing comes first in the work of god salvation comes first in the work of god having possessing eternal life comes first in the work of god confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. Continue in the faith. You know, there are people that walk and walk, they leave faith behind. They leave love behind. They leave grace behind. And they leave hope behind. They leave their assurance of heaven behind. And they are running, and they are running. And I call on them and I say, my brother, you're too active. You've left something behind. If Christ comes now, as you have left faith and grace and love and mercy and the fruit of the Spirit behind, and you're just running, you would run in vain. Slow down. Pick up that faith again. And if you are running, make sure you run with faith. If you are running, make sure you run with love. If you are running, make sure you are running with the grace of God in your heart. They continue in the faith. And then they commended them unto the Lord, verse 23, in whom they believed. I pray you will be like that. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. We're reading from verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 4. We're reading from verse 5. Watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist under the new covenant that's the work that's the work do the work of an evangelist many souls are dying many souls are perishing and we cannot bury ourselves in the four corners of a building and everything we do is only inside that building there are millions and billions of people outside that building. And now it says we do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. We will. I will. 
John chapter 9 verse 4 John chapter 9 verse 4 I must work but that's not the end because you see there are people that pick up a work for themselves that's what I like to do not what you like to do I must work the works of him that sent me the works of him that sent me that's Jesus Christ what was he sent for he was sent to be the savior of the world and everyone that came to him he sent them forth he said go and preach the gospel he said let the dead bury their dead but you go and preach the kingdom of god he laid the example he said i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day the night cometh when no man can walk as long as i am in the world i am the light of the world the light of tell me the light of the temple the light of the temple answer now Matthew chapter 5 Matthew chapter 5 I'm reading from verse 14 Matthew chapter 5 verse 14 I'm waiting for you to open the Bible I'm sure you have opened it now yes or no Matthew what chapter what verse? Ye yeah, are the light of the building, of the temple, of the sanctuary. You know, there are people, they say they are born again, and all the work they know to do is only inside the temple, only inside the building. And yet, Jesus said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Everywhere he went, on the street, at the seashore, in the boat, outside, what he did was to show the light of the love of God so that people in darkness will hear the good news of salvation and come to the Lord. And he says the same way he is the light of the world it says ye are the light of the world ye are the light of the world he has not appointed us for us to say only in this church building and everything we do good things we do wonderful things we do only to the people that come and come and come and come again and our light can only shine here he wants us to be the light of the world in the office in our communities and to preach salvation by grace and salvation by faith in Christ. He wants the people that know us and the people we know. He wants the light of the gospel to shine to them. And if we don't do that outside the church building, we're not doing the work he has appointed for us to do. I pray you'll do the work he has appointed. I will. I will. And the Lord will bless your work in Jesus' name. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Remember, remember, is the work as appointed for us to do in the world. There is more need in the world than inside the building, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Point number two, a divine wisdom, a political wisdom with newborn consecration. Now, when we talk about wisdom, the different kinds of wisdom. There is wisdom that belongs to politics, at least that's what they think, because of the way they maneuver, 
of the way they compete, of the way they push down the others so that they can come up. That's the essence of what they want to do so that the people will recognize them as the only person suitable for that office. And therefore, all the others are counted as opponents and are counted as enemies. But you know, that wisdom is condemned in the work of God, in the work we're doing for the Lord. Look at James chapter 3. James chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 13. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Meekness of wisdom, humility of uh, wisdom, self-effacing attitude, ability and skill. That's the wisdom. But... If ye have bitter envy and strive in your hearts, glory not, lie not against the truth. This wisdom that comes with bitterness, this wisdom that comes with envy, this wisdom that comes with strife, this wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly sensual devilish for where envy and strife is there is confusion and every evil work but the wisdom that is from above this wisdom from above which god gives to accomplish the work he has assigned for every one of us wisdom that is from above is first pure then peaceable gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, reading from verse 4, the wisdom we apply in the work of God is not political wisdom. It's not earthly wisdom. It's not Lucifer's wisdom. It's not hellish wisdom. It should be the wisdom of God. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, politician's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. Your faith cannot stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. How be it who speak wisdom? among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught, but will speak wisdom, the wisdom of God, in the mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Then in verse 13, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. You see the kind of wisdom we're talking about? That's the wisdom of the world. That should never be applied in doing the work he has committed into our hands. Uh, look at Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. I'm reading here from verse 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. We're reading from verse 3. 
when we say wisdom, we need to check up what kind of wisdom a way of preaching with. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 3. I sought in my heart to keep myself unto wine, yet acquainting my heart with wisdom. You see, Solomon here said, I sought to taste and test every kind of wine, and yet having some kind of wisdom, and to lay hold on folly until I might see what was that good for the sons of men which they should do under the heaven all the days of their lives. I made me great works, I builded me houses, I planted me vineyards, me, 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 self-centered. I made me gardens, me, and orchards. I planted trees in them of all kinds of fruit. I made me, it's always me, I made me pools of water, and to water their ways, the woods that, are, that bring it for trees. I got me, 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 is the wisdom of the world. I got me servants and mid servants and maidens, and had, and had servants born in my house. Also, I had great possession of great and small cattle above all that were before me all that were in Jerusalem before me I gathered me me you see when the wisdom sentence on me on me my promotion my exaltation my admiration whatever I gathered me also silver and gold and the peculiar treasure of kings and of the prince of the provinces. I got me, me, me singing men and women sing, singers, and the delights of the sons of men as musical instruments, and that of all souls. I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also, my wisdom remained with me. You see, that kind, that kind of perverted wisdom, misused wisdom, instead of using it for the glory of God, only using it now for self, that's not the will of God. You will not be like that. And whatsoever my eyes desired, I kept not from them. Whatever my ass desire, that woman, that wine, that wells, whatever, I did not deny myself. I, I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor. This was my portion of all my labor. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do, and behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. The wisdom was too self centered, self centered, and that did not profit him or profit the nation. Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28. I'm reading here from verse 12. Ezekiel chapter 28, reading from verse 12. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyros and say unto him, Thus says the Lord God, Thou sealest up the psalm full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. Look at verse 17. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. It's bright, sharp, wise, and he corrupted the wisdom. Actually, that eventually talks about Lucifer. As the Lord has appointed work for us to do, he gives appropriate wisdom. 
not political wisdom, appropriate wisdom to do the work he has given us to do. Look at that appropriate wisdom now. Exodus chapter 31. Exodus chapter 31. I read from verse 3. Exodus chapter 31, verse 3. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom. I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. In all manner of work, workmanship, God determined the work and he gave appropriate wisdom to accomplish that work. Not the wisdom of the world, not the wisdom of politicians, not the wisdom of Lucifer, not the wisdom of the people of the world, but the wisdom that came from God directly. He said, I appointed the work and I know the kind of wisdom that will accomplish that work and I give him that wisdom. I pray God will give you such wisdom. Ezra chapter 7. Ezra chapter 7. And we're reading from verse 10. Ezra chapter 7 from verse 10 for Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to do it and to do it that's the very first thing that you come to the presence of God he changes your nature it changes your heart. It changes your life. And before you lay your hand on any work to do, here you seek the word of the Lord so that you'll be obedient to the word of the Lord and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. Look at verse 25. And thou, Ezra, after, we, after the wisdom of thy God, not of Satan, not of the world, after the wisdom of thy God that is in thine hand, set magistrates and judges, which may judge all the people that are beyond the river, all such as know the laws of thy God and teach ye them that know them not. That's the work he has given us to do, to teach the people who are ignorant of the will of God, of the word of God, of the way of salvation. And we do that in the wisdom that he has given. How do we find that wisdom? Look at Job chapter 28. Job chapter 28. I read from verse 12. Job chapter 28 verse 12 but where shall wisdom be found the wisdom to accomplish life's task the wisdom to do what he has committed into our hands to do and the wisdom to accomplish everything he has committed into our hands where shall wisdom be found and where is the place of understanding man knoweth not the price thereof neither is it found in the land of the living the depth saith it is not in me the sea saith it is not worth me it cannot be gotten for gold neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof it cannot be valued for the gold of offer we is the precious onyx of the, of the sapphire the gold and the crystal cannot equal that wisdom and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold no mention shall be made of coral of pearls for the price of wisdom is above rubies the topaz
of Ethiopia shall not equal it, neither shall it be valued with pure gold. Whence then cometh wisdom? Where is the place of understanding? How do we find the wisdom? How do we find the understanding to do the work he has appointed for us to do? It says in, the, in, verse, in verse 21, seeing it is hid from the eyes of all living and kept close from the fowls of the air. Destruction and they say we have heard the fame thereof with our ears. God understandeth the way thereof. He knoweth the place thereof. For he looketh to the ends of the earth and seeth under the whole heaven to make the weight of the winds and wears the waters by measure when he made a decree for the rain and a wave for the lightning of the thunder then did he see it and declare it and he prepared he prepared it yea he searched it out unto man he said behold the fear of the lord that is wisdom. Anywhere you can search, anywhere you try to find that wisdom to do the work he has appointed for you to do, you cannot find. But it says, Now behold the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. I pray the Lord will grant us understanding. And the Lord will grant us wisdom, not craftiness, not cunning wisdom of the world but the wisdom of the lord himself for the work he has given us to do he will give unto you unto me unto us in jesus name i'm reading from luke chapter 21 luke chapter 21 i'm reading from verse 15 for i will give you a mouth and wisdom that's the promise of the lord he gave every man his work to do Every man is duty. Every man is assignment. And he says to carry out that duty and to carry out that assignment, he says, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all the advers all your adversaries shall not be able to gain, say, or resist. He will give us wisdom. I said he will give us wisdom. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 6. We're reading from verse 2. Acts chapter 6, verse 2. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason, it is not reasonable, it's not right, it's not fit, it's not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. New covenant, New Testament work. Preach the word. Evangelize. Teach the people of God. Teach us the word of God. That is the assignment and the work in the New Testament. It is not right that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you. How many? Tell me out aloud. Seven men, before I go on, you know, if you go back to the old covenant, you will discover this area of work in their temple, thousands and thousands, 20 and 4,000 to do this, 4,000 to do this, 4,000 to do this, 288,000 to do this and to do this one month for all the rest of the 11 months you can go home and do whatever you want to do and then another set will come in only one month but you know you come to the new covenant now and it says as we're going to look at distributing food and you know there were thousands of members at that time actually in those days the number of disciples multiplied into thousands and thousands and thousands you have 3,000 in chapter 2, 5,000 in chapter 4, and then chapter 5, thousands of them. They're just multiplied. And now to serve 
tables. How many men were they looking for? 7,000? Tell me now. Only seven. Because the real major work in the new covenant is going into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's the major work. That's why they said, look here among yourselves, seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Not worldly wisdom, not wisdom of men, not wisdom of Lucifer, not wisdom of Satan, the Holy Ghost and wisdom who we may appoint unto this work. But we will give ourselves, tell me, continually to watch, to prayer, and to the ministry of the word, to the ministry of the word. And the saint pleased the whole multitude, and it chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. Then we come to verse 8, and Stephen, full of faith and power, the great wonders and miracles among the people. Verse 10, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he speak. I pray God will give us such wisdom. Point number one, every man's appointed work under the new covenant. Point number two, a define a political wisdom with newborn consecration. Point number three now, earnest appropriate watchfulness over the new found commission. The commission he has given us, the work he has given us to do, the preaching of the gospel, that everybody will hear, that all the villages, all the cities, all the towns, every creature under the sun will hear that Jesus says, if we don't do any other thing, if we give ourselves to that with all the methods and all the gadgets and everything, all the media we can use today to make sure that everybody hears the gospel, that that's what he wants us to watch over. He doesn't want us to become careless and then get distracted there, get distracted there. Earnest, appropriate watchfulness over the newfound commission. We're coming back to Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 33. Mark chapter 13, verse 33. Take heed, take heed and watch and pray. For ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a fight journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants, and to every man his work, and to every man his work. Thank God you have your work to do. I say, thank God you have your work to do. You will not fail. You will not be negligent. You will not abandon that personal aside work he has given you to do to be the light of the world in Jesus name and to every man his work and he commanded the potter to watch what she therefore for ye know not when the master of the house cometh at even or at midnight or at cock crowing or in the morning let's come in suddenly he find you sleeping and what I say unto you I say unto all watch you will watch over the work he has given you you will watch in Jesus name Matthew chapter 24 I'm reading from verse 37. Matthew chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 37. And as the days of Noah, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Hold on. If you look at some ministries, fellowships, assembly, churches today, the concentration is how you have enough money for what you can eat, how you have enough money for what you can drink, how you need to have enough money for marriage 
and for the family. Everything is concentrated, the prayer, the program, everything is concentrated on what we have and what we eat and what we drink and the shelter we have and the marriage and family and having children. But Jesus said, as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And they knew not, until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. They shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the meal, the one taken and the other left. What is seen is there are people who are ready for the coming of the Lord, who will be ready for the rapture. Maybe in your place of work, you're in your office, you're in the market, and two of you are there. One is taken, the one that is ready, and the one that is not ready is led for the Antichrist. Christ and the great tribulation. I pray you will not be left behind. When the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise and then we which are alive shall be taken away. I pray you will be among the people that will make it on that day. Saved, sanctified, purified, prepared and ready for the coming of the Lord. You will be ready in Jesus name. For one shall be taken, and the other shall be led. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that ye, the good man of the house, had known in what watch, in what section of the night, the thief will come, he would have watched, and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready. I pray you'll be ready. I said you'll be ready. Be ye therefore ready, for in such an hour as she think not the Son of Man cometh, who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord has made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season, to give them the word of salvation and the word of righteousness and the word of his grace and the word that prepares us for the coming of the Lord and give that word in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord when he comes shall find so doing. Those are the people watching. He's giving me a work to do. He's giving me a message to preach. He's giving me a ministry to fulfill. And I keep on doing it. I keep on doing it. Beginning of the year, middle of the year, end of the year. I keep on doing it. Feeding the church of God. He says, blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he comes, shall find so doing. Verily, I say unto you, that ye shall make him ruler over all his goods. Verse 48, servants who are not watching, church people who are not watching, church goers who are not watching, but, and if that evil servant shall say, it is sad, my Lord, the Lord is coming and shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and to drink with the drunken. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him and in an hour that is not aware of and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I pray that will not be your Lord. In Luke chapter 12, Luke chapter 12, reading from verse 39. Luke chapter 12, reading from verse 39. And this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. Then 
Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us, or even unto all? And the Lord said, Who then is the faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord has made ruler over his household, to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth, I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he has. But, and if that servant shall say in his heart, we read this in Matthew, and Luke is recording this for us. If the servant shall not watch, the assignment the Lord has given, he doesn't watch over it. He's after this and after that and running after a lot of things apart from the work he has been given to do. If that servant shall say in his search, my Lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to beat the men servants. It becomes cruel. It becomes brutal. And it becomes negligent of the love of the fruit of the spirit. The love the gentleness, the faith, and the hope, and everything the Lord has told us to do the work ways. If he now becomes so brutal, cruel, oppressive, and he begins to beat the main servants and the maidens, and to eat and to drink and to be drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware of and will cut him asunder, and will appoint him his portion of the unbelievers. I pray that you will not be my portion. I say it will not be my portion. Verse 47, And that servant which knew his Lord's will, he knows the appointed work, he knows the appointed responsibility. He knows the assignment he shall carry out. He knows he should pick up the gospel and preach the gospel to every creature in his neighborhood. He knows the master's will, but he says, that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But, verse 48, he that knew not and did commit things worthy of strives shall be beaten with few strives. I pray you're not coming to judgment. Songs of Solomon, chapter 1. Songs of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 6. Songs of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 6. Look not upon me, because I am black. Because the sun has looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me, and they made me the keeper of vineyards. But my own vineyard have I not kept. They made me keeper of vineyards, and they make me do this, and do this, and do that. But my own soul have I not kept. My own vineyard have I not kept. I pray you will not be like that. You have a soul to watch over. You have a life to watch over. You have a family to watch over. You have an assignment to watch over. And I pray you will do it creditably well in Jesus' name. I'm reading from Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1, chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one at six wings. With twain, he covered his face, and with twain, he covered his feet, and with twain, he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, 
Here is Isaiah. He had been serving the Lord. He thought he had done in all because you listen to him in chapter 1, listen to him in chapter 2, even chapter 3, 4, and 5, uh, listen to him. He thought he really preached the word of God. He was a great prophet. But now he saw the vision of the Lord. I pray that this new year, you'll see the vision of the Lord in Jesus' name. You will see beyond your nose. You will see beyond the little needs you have in your little circle. And you will see the vision of the Lord ahead of you that has a great work for you to do. You will do it in Jesus' name. You know, be like those before at the time, before the flood, eating and drinking, eating and drinking, eating and drinking, marrying and giving marriage, building and planting and doing whatever. But you will lift up your eyes and you will see the great work he has commissioned you to do. He said, woe is me if I am undone because I am a man of unclean, unclean leaves. And I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean leaves. He said, I'm just like the people in my community how can i be a change agent how can i be a transforming agent if their mouth is like my mouth their leaves are my, like my leaves their language is like my language and their thinking is like my thinking and the way i live is the way they are living if i am not different if I'm not cleansed, if I'm not purged, if I'm not distinct from them, how can I minister unto them? He said, woe is me. I'm a man of, I'm undone. Because I'm a man of unclean leaves and I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean leaves. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me. And with a life coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongues from off the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth. It will cleanse you today. It will purge you today. The fire coming from the altar of God will burn every chaff and everything that should not be there will burn it away from your life in Jesus' name. And then will you be able to refocus on the assignment, on the duty, on the responsibility as giving you to do, and you'll not be beating about the bush this single life you have. You will use it for the glory of God in Jesus' name. It will not be for bread and butter alone. It will not be for mortar and cement alone. It will not be for material things of this world which shall vanish away and be burnt up on the final day. It will be for an enduring work that will never be burnt away in Jesus' name. He said, he laid it upon my mouth and he said, Lo, this has touched thy leaves and thine iniquity is taken away. He needed sanctification. He needed the purging of the heart. He needed the purifying of his very soul. It's iniquity iniquity was taken away and I seen for then I had the voice of the Lord saying whom shall I send I had the voice of the Lord saying whom shall I send and who will go for us then said I everybody one two three go say that again say that aloud that's what the Lord is calling us to do. He has a work to do. Forget yourself. Forget your own need. Forget, I need this. You've got enough. You've been blessed over and over and over. We've been blessed at the retreat. We've been blessed at the Congress. We've been blessed all these uh, meeting days. The Lord is not saying, there are people that are not, that are not tested, even the first blessing of salvation and the first blessing of faith and the first blessing of grace. And he's looking for people that are right up and it's everyone everyone because all the people in the early church they made themselves available now you are available now i am available now i am available you'll be available in jesus name and then we're told and they therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word they that were scattered abroad they went everywhere and they were preaching the word now yourself 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 everyone here and everyone over there as we have received the grace of god and he has given every man his work to do we're not going back home we're going to the streets we're going to our communities we're going everywhere
there and we're going to be preaching the word in jesus name there is more out there you spend time more time out there than you spend in here let's be earnest and let's watch over this great assignment the lord has given us we're going to accomplish it in jesus name and your reward you will not miss my reward i will not miss i said my reward i will not miss what are you telling the Lord? What are you telling the Lord? Telling the Lord, here am I, send me. Here am I, send me. Rise up and tell the Lord, here am I, send me. I am ready. I am ready. Here am I, send me. Don't ask for bread and butter. Just seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these other things he will add unto you. That's not the time for, oh God, give me this. Oh God, give me this. There are thousands of people. There are millions of people around you. They don't even have a fraction of what you have you've got enough you've got enough tell the lord today i give my time i give my talent i give my life i give my resources i give my skill i give everything i have all the people must hear all the people must hear all the people must hear they must hear the gospel they must hear the gospel you have a work to do you have an assignment to carry out he gave every man his work he has given you the work to do you get up and address yourself to that work and say lord i will lord i must and lord all the days of my life even from even from today and even from this week i give my strength i give everything i've got and i'm going to serve you i'm going to serve you i'll be faithful i'll be faithful i'll be committed i'll be loyal i'm going to put all my strength and everything i've got into the work he has called me to and you need the wisdom of God to do that. Not the wisdom of politicians, not the wisdom of the people of the world, but the wisdom coming from God, that with the wisdom of God, you will do what he has called you to do, and so so come into the kingdom, and so so be saved, and then so so be sanctified, and you prepare many people, many people, many people for the glorious coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, here am I, send me.